Overdrive. That's a video game that's coming out this year. There's not many of them at PAX. So we're joined by Mr. Brandon Winfrey, head of community. Hello, how are you doing? Manager at Insomniac Games. Yes. First yes. of all, show everyone your boots. Okay. Those are great boots. boots. I know your shirt says Sex Burger. That's pretty good too, but the boots are the best. Thank you very you much. You from down south? Yeah, I'm from so Memphis, Tennessee, so I always got to represent. I'm allowed to wear these. When, when people wear these and they're not from the south, I'm yeah. like, mm, I'm a little judgy. I, were you, you at Gamescom? Why. I was. Did you see there was a store that only sold snake boots? They only <laughs> I swear well, to God. So in Germany, they <laughs> love American stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. I think that, yeah, it's like that um, Baywatch, David Hasselhoff yeah, kind yeah. of David, thing. That, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah, really, yeah. Gotta love the Hoff. So if you are in, next time you're in Cologne, go like <laughs> west go. of the Mesa and there's just best snake boot oh, store in the world. I, I, I will purchase some. Great, sure. but we're not here to talk about snake boots. We could. They're probably not even called snake boots, are they? <laughs> I don't know what they're, these, these are, uh, I think they're just, yeah. We're whatever. still talking about <laughs> the boots. <laughs> it's all right. We need to talk about Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, you guys, you're playable in the Xbox booth. Yes, um, we like are. People getting hands on it. Uh, this yeah. is kind of like Insomniacs, I don't know. It's like you guys did like Resistance and Ratchet mm -hmm. and it's kind of like this. Like yeah, two yeah. worlds colliding. They it's made like, sweet love together. Yeah, and, and yeah. popped this baby <laughs> of this this colorful drinks. baby that drinks energy drinks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sunset Overdrive is really kind of a game that we've been almost building up to for the mm. 20 years we've been a studio. Yeah, it just combines kind of our love of platforming elements and crazy weapons and just combining them all into this fast-paced, colorful, uh, humorous game. So. Yeah, we've we've loved working on it, and it's, it's awesome to just work on a game that we really wanted to work on. Yeah. So uh, we got a bunch of gameplay footage of it. I think it's All a right. game that kind of uh, you need to see. I th actually, you know what? I actually think you need to play it to yeah. sort of get it. Yeah. Um, w w yeah. What's it been like? Because it's it, it's one of these games that I think people are sort of reacting to, like. Uh, they're not really sure if they want to play it. Right. And then when people get their hands on it, they're kind of like, oh, okay, I kind of get what it is now. Yeah, for like, sure. That, that's kind of a challenge for you guys, it's, right? Yeah, see, those. It's, it's a different type of game. It's it's not a normal third-person shooter where you're just sitting there shooting away. Like, mm. that's it, we want to be the anti that. Like, we want you to constantly be moving and traversing at the same time while shooting. And I think that's just, whenever you're bringing something new to the table, I think some people are just going to be a little averse to that. But once they once they get it, and there is a... There's a learning curve. Like we'll be fully, we're yeah. fully aware that it takes some time to to get used to shooting and moving at the same time. But but you get there really quickly, and all of a sudden you're just you're going ace. See this guy is staying on the ground right now, mm. and you can see he's, he's taking damage because that the, the ground is dangerous. That's kind of something we talk about a lot. Is the floor's lava, so you'll you'll die if you yeah. stay on the ground. But that's okay because we. We, we are a video game. That's another thing we're very yeah. aware of. I've seen your respawn animations yeah. are pretty varied and ridiculous. Yeah, that's because it's, it's one of those situations where fun trumps realism for us. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of games nowadays are trying to pretend that they're not video games. Mm. And for us, it was the complete opposite. It's like, we're making a video game. Let's go wild and have fun. So, the f so from all the gameplay you've been showing, you've very much been focusing on the, the moment to moment, actually what's going on. Like, right. Radio what is it? What is the? What are you trying to do in terms of like the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay? Is it chaining? Is it leveling yeah, up your the, character? What's the kind of like the the focus? Right. So it's. I would say it's it's momentum-based gameplay. Mm. So essentially, what you're doing is you want to constantly be moving and traversing at the same time while shooting. And you see here up in this right-hand corner, you see a style meter, and that is that's kind of something you always want to be focused on because as you're getting style you're unlocking your amps, and you're unlocking special abilities. Like right here, you see he's using this melee attack here, mm. where it summons tornadoes. That's an amp. So the only way you're gonna have that amp is if you're playing stylishly and you have your style meter up. So it's, it's very momentum-based, where you always wanna keep your kill combos up and, and switch up your weapons and traversal. Always get that style meter up, and that's when you're gonna be playing at your most badass. So are you unlocking abilities? Are you focusing in one direction? Like how? In terms of customization, right, like right. So what's going on there? there's full visual customization, like there's that. Mm. But as far as like uh, ability customization, we have uh, stuff called amps, and amps are equipable on your character. You can have four or five on your character at all times, and they they slot into different sections. Like there's a melee one, there's kind of a traversal one, there's a there's a weapon one, and that's whatever you want to do. There's there's epic amps called like a chance of thunder, where lightning just strikes down, and yeah. it's, it's destroying everything in the area, and that's at a high level of play. But it, you can really, so not only can you customize your character visually, but you can customize how you want to play. Like, if you want to focus on fire damage, you can do that through the amp system. Uh, Sunset City, that's where, that's where it yeah, is? Yeah, Sunset, Sun, yeah, beautiful yeah. Sunset it's City. Nice, all, nice yeah. uh, nice how place. big is it? It's pretty, and how important is that in terms of a game like this? It's like, pretty huge. So, the, the city itself is, is really big from distance to distance. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, it's really varied. But I think also something that's super unique about our game is uh, we had to 
because it focuses so much on traversal, yeah. there's so much of it that's built vertically. Uh, I'm trying to see if you'll get a good shot from this footage, but I don't know if you will, mm. but like, we, we built so much of it uh, just focus on the vertical design, not just the horizontal design. And that was super important to us because honestly, as you're going through the city, as you, you'll start off kind of where the buildings aren't super high. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier to get around. But as you're moving through the city, you go to the, towards the ending areas, they're gonna be skyscrapers. So you're gonna have to know your traversal system really well in order to get around super well. So are you, uh, throughout the uh, campaign, are you unlocking areas or are you like clearing out the infected You're kind of, or like yeah. what's your main motivation yeah. for that? Yeah, kind of the drive is um, you, you kind of want to escape Sunset City and along the way you're meeting these new factions, mm. which are people who are also surviving the apocalypse like you. Um, so you're meeting these factions. This isn't a faction guy, but I just love him because he's the King Scab. But you're going through and there's different ones like... Let's see, we have uh, the Fargarths and the Troop Bushido. Mm. And you're, they each have their different problems and different ways that you can help them out. So and they're kind of in their own areas. So it's kind of split off into that where you're helping these guys and you know, eventually maybe you all band together. Who yeah. knows? So. Cool. So is it primarily single player? Is there any co-op stuff happening there is, as well? There's an entire co-op mode as well. Uh, it's eight player co-op. It's called Chaos Squad. Mm. You can play with seven of your friends. And I'm telling you, that, that's when the game gets wild and insane. It's called Chaos Squad for a reason. Yeah. But is, is that outside of the main single player stuff? Is right, like yeah, yeah. A, single player is okay. just a story driven experience where you're, you're doing your thing. But everything you unlock in single player, you can take back over to multiplayer and mm -hmm. vice versa. So you'll look exactly like your character when you go to multiplayer. But the multiplayer is, it's really simple to go into. You just go up to a phone booth, drop in, and you basically do missions in the open world uh, with your friends. And then it all culminates in this night defense, which is actually what we're showing at PAX here uh, this weekend. So yeah. So what's the reception been at the booth? You guys are in with the Microsoft, so obviously yeah. this is Xbox exclusive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xbox One. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What's it like uh, having people play? Because you guys are kind of like a studio, have been around. Like you got people back as far as '98 when they played Spyro. Yeah. Where yeah. it's Um sure. Yeah. Is this a game you think you're sort of because you're uh, you know as your role as community mm -hmm. head, as yeah. a community manager. Um, is this a game? Do you think your community is sort of adopting easily? Or yeah, I think it's. I think people recognize that this is. Insomniac is kind of a group of misfits, mm. and I think they recognize that this is this is a game where you can just be who you want to be, and not only in just like it, it's a reverence, but also just in its style and, and tone. So uh, I think people are really receptive to that, and that's why people love Insomniac in the first place, is because mm. they grew up on Spyro and they grew up on Ratchet, and they loved Resistance. And seeing, I think people really recognize that this is uh, this is an evolution of who we are. So. Uh, more than anything else, as well, and I think uh, this is sort of a problem that we have in the sort of wider streaming games on the internet. It actually like looks like one of the sort of first really good looking next gen oh, games thank on Xbox. You. But like in yeah. terms of like the frame rate and everything else as well. Right. Like how right. much of a focus was that for you guys? Because you've always made kind of like visually, you know, caustic games or right. like striking games. Right. Uh, was there ever a worry like when you make a game that's this sort of, I don't know, colorful and vibrant mm -hmm. that people who are into like shooter games are gonna go, what the hell is this kitty nonsense? Right. I mean you're always gonna face that, right? That's always something that people want. But for us it was like people have had that. All last generation, yeah. they got to see that. So let's provide them with something new. Yeah, you and guys made one of one of those. Yeah, we made a resistance, yeah, yeah. which which was you know it had that apocalyptic tone, and this mm. this is the opposite. This is resistance with confetti. Yeah, like that's what this is. Um, so that's what matches. And yeah, you always you, maybe you worry about that, but for us it was like, well, we just want to make something colorful and bright and vibrant. And for us, the the effects were also a huge part of it as mm. well. So we put a lot of focus into all these. So when you see when you shoot guns, sometimes you'll see blam come out, like very spot, Scott Pilgrim esque. Yeah. So which is great because it was a video game inspired or a comic inspired by a video game and then inspired a movie and then we were inspired by that movie. Oh. So it's full circle. I heard was it that I hear Ted Price talking about the young ones at one stage? As uh, a reference? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's that's, a, that's deep into British television yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. There's um, our creative directors, uh, Drew Murray and Marcus Smith, they are just, they had a vision from the very beginning about yeah. what they wanted this game to be. And uh, they really nailed it. Like, it, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, because normally when you're developing a new IP, it changes a ton. Yeah, Like for sure. Naturally. Um, but this one, the, the tone and everything has been pretty consistent throughout the whole thing and that's that's been exciting and I think it really shows when uh, the, uh, the focus of it is in the full game so yeah so yeah. you guys are pretty close to release now is yeah. it October it's coming out October 28th yeah in um, North America and then October 31st in uh, uh, Europe area yeah um, so yeah and then 
there's a white Xbox bundled with it as well. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so and it's basically that makes the free. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The the white one. But if you buy that one, you get the game for free essentially because yeah. it's still 400 bucks. So yeah, do that if you don't have an Xbox. It, awesome. it reminds me of the kind of I guess maybe around the Xbox 360 uh, like first two years when Dead Rising came out, right? And it was a game that yeah a lot of people weren't necessarily sure. Yeah, it's like well, I don't like understand. It. It's like Japanese studio making yeah. this very Western kind of game. Yeah. Like, there are some parallels uh, in terms of like at least vision that this is quite a sort of a different for sure game. for sure is, how does it it must be strange making a game you know i'm sure microsoft are helping you guys out in terms of like feedback on this yeah, microphone yeah, it's fine it's fine in terms that's of my, like, that's my emp oh, body it? giving off the effects i don't know Okay, that's, there that's we go. That's your own effect. There you go. We're done. <laughs> that's my, I have an amp equipped on myself. That's good. So in case the interview gets pretty hard, you just, <laughs> yeah. just, it's just it on. everything explodes. <laughs> like I, you know, Microsoft are obviously like a partner of you guys in terms of marketing, and right. you know, there's been so much visibility of Sunset Overdrive, yeah. like even here yeah, online. Yeah. You guys have been. It, it there must be a pressure in being like you know a first party game. Or right. Sorry, a third party game, but like a game that's only coming out on on one console. Yeah. That perhaps you know doesn't have that massive install base. Yeah. Um, does that change how you guys like approach development or like the game you make or something? I don't think so. For us, it's for us from the very beginning, it was about making the game we wanted to make. Mm. And and Somniac's an independent studio, uh, and Microsoft's been a great partner. But for us. We wanted to own this IP, like right. we, and that was super important. And, and Microsoft, they were like, "Yeah, we'll, we'll publish it, and you guys can own the IP." Mm. And for us, that was super important because. Do Sony own Resistance then? Yeah, they own oh, they Resistance okay. and Ratchet. So All this right. is, uh, we own, we own, a, but from here on out, we just want to own our own IPs. So yeah. like, it was, it, it's, it's awesome, and I think uh, that that's been really good for us as like an independent studio to. Yeah kind of have that backing behind it is, is fantastic. Excellent. So what can people play at your booth? So, Aerobox? yes, they can come play Chaos Squad at the booth. It's the eight-player co-op experience. Uh, come play it. If you win, you get a fizzy pen. Cool. It's pretty rad. Yeah. Yeah. We've also yeah. got punches of this stuff. How oh, much overcharge have yeah. you drunk since you got here? Yeah. Look at that. I actually, I've never had one of these. I'm pure. You should drink right now. I'm a pure blood. You drink one right now. Oh, man. Since you're putting me on the spot. Put your, put your mouth where your brand is, boy. All right. Here we go. Mm, hope I don't turn into a mutant. One go. Skull it in one. There you go, yeah. You gotta do it. Do it for the community. Come on, chug, 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 chug. Oh man, this is suck so bad. You alright? You're like halfway. You can do it, buddy. Come on. Think about those snake boots. <laughs> My god. Oh, there you go. Woo! Alright. You Man. just destroyed my body. I hope you know that. <laughs> oh, you're going to have a skip in your stuff. Oh, my God. Day. That's so sweet. Crush it and throw it. You earned it. Bam. Sorry, production crew. <laughs> God damn. I was doing what he told me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is your second PAX Prime? Yeah, it is. Cool. It uh, is. What do you think about the show? I, I, you know, your job is right. community. So right. what's it like I, actually being I here? love it, obviously. Like, it's... You know, you have E3 in, in your bigger... Like, in your Comic-Cons as well. But this is, this is where the heart of the community is. Yeah. And to see people go around and people come up to you and just people that you have changed, you know, their mm. their lives from these games. And my life has been changed by games as well. So I relate a lot to that. And just hearing them say that, it's it's always amazing just to hear their stories. That's what keeps you going, right? Like that's why you make games is to mm. make people happy and to make them feel. So yeah. Do you guys, do you guys have any panels or meet and greets or anything? Uh, that's going we on? don't. I think that I, hmm, there might be a meet and greet. There's the bus that's going around picking up. I saw. Up people. Yeah, it's yeah. got a big old friggin. Zombie dudes stuck yeah. on the fun. Yeah, they're not yeah. zombies, right? What are they? Infected? They're, they're mutants. Mutants. They're mutants. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutants. It's the trifecta of <laughs> video game <laughs> death stuff. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, have you seen any cosplay of any Insomniac stuff? I have. There's been some. That some guy came today and he made his own high fidelity weapon, which oh, really? is uh, which is a crazy record that shoots vinyl records. Yeah. And he made it, and that that's was awesome. Already. So, yeah. Before the game's even out. Yeah. Like, which yeah. is fantastic. I. Well, the reason I love Sunset Overdrive cosplay, and the reason I wear it a lot, is. Uh, you just go to the thrift store, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. I'll take this, this, and this. So Just it's get fun. any sort of late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, just punk anything you want to do. I'm, well, Sunday, I dress up when I work because I, I like to. I, I bought a bee costume. Okay. And I'm just going to be a bee because why not? You just can. That's so, fair yeah, yeah. It's why not? Fun. You're a man who wears snake boots unironically yeah. all the time. So <laughs> exactly. why not be a suit? Exactly. I like it. Own it. Yeah. It's, that's what, that's, and that's what the game is about just yeah. owning who you are. So, crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've, as Insomniac, uh -huh. your manager, have you ever seen anyone in a Spyro cosplay? 
I'm a big Spyro fan. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen Spyro cosplay. I saw life. so a, a, a girl Work on in all fours, like a, Spyro Wolf. Oh no, I haven't like, seen that. Yeah. I will say I. Uh, <laughs> I dressed up for for Halloween. We dressed up, yeah. and I bought a Skylander Spyro okay. outfit, and I wore that. And it was a child's, oh, really? so it was incredibly small. But I won the Halloween contest, oh, really? so but it was I did, worth it. In the end. It was worth it. It was worth all the uh, in- uncomfortableness in the crotch area. For Excellent. Days. Nice work. Uh, you yeah. were in town for the next couple of days. Is there anything else you're going to check out? Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I'd love checking out. I, I love Evolve. Um, yeah, the indie mega booth is something I yeah, always it's incredible. love as well. There's more uh, on the sixth floor as well. Oh yeah, There's like a really? whole other section. Uh, yeah. my, my good friend, uh, he's making close castles, and mm. I love that game so much. Um, so that's an indie, the indie mega booth is where I love to spend my time at these kind of things because that's something you don't get at the bigger shows yeah. usually. So and they're just doing great things in that space. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. You don't yeah. necessarily get that stuff at E3 at all. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Sure. Brandon from Asamiak. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. One I last appreciate time. it. Xbox One. Yeah. October uh, 28th. When's it coming out? October 28th. October 28th.